Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we take a look at the Minnesota Twins 2024 team outlook. The Twins will look to build off a strong 2023 campaign which saw them finally exercise their playoff demons with their first playoff series win since the 2002 ALDS as they dispatch the Toronto Blue Jays in two games. They will go on to fall to the Houston Astros in four games in the divisional series. If the Twins are going anywhere this season, it relies on the health of third baseman Royce Lewis. The former first overall pick has been hampered by injuries his first two seasons in the majors, and last year was limited to just 52 games. However, with the limited playing time, he still popped 15 home runs and drove in 52 and hit 309. He sparked the Twins' offense in the wildcard series with two massive home runs to propel the Twins to a Game 1 victory. Other important pieces for the Twins are Carlos Correa and Byron Buxton. Correa and Buxton were only in the lineup at the same time for 76 of the 162-game schedule. The often injured Buxton hasn't played over 100 games in a season since 2017, and a return to everyday playing time in center field would do wonders for the Twins. The Twins have some big shoes to fill in the rotation with the absence of Sonny Gray, who left via free agency to the St. Louis Cardinals. Gray finished third in the AL Cy Young voting last year. The focus now shifts to new ace Pablo Lopez, who posted an 11-6 record with a 3.66 ERA, including a 1.35 postseason ERA over 12 innings. They did add to their pitching via trade that saw fan favorite Hori Polanco traded to the Seattle Mariners for right-handed reliever Justin Topa, who pitched to a 2.61 ERA over 69 innings. They also brought in starting pitcher Anthony DiScofani, who pitched with the San Francisco Giants last year and posted a 4-8 record. Their lone free agent move was bringing in veteran switch hitter Carlos Santana. Santana spent last season with the Pittsburgh Pirates and clumped 23 home runs for the black and gold. He's now dancing his way to the Midwest to join the Twins in a DH role. Let's take a look at how the Twins roster unfolds in 2024. So taking a look at the Twins lineup, not the sexiest of lineups, but does have a couple names in there. Dylan, uh, what sticks out to you when you first take a, a glance at that at that Twins lineup? It's got to be Royce Lewis. I yeah. got to see this guy play 162 games and see the numbers he can put up. Um, Carlos Correa. Byron Buxton, it's a lot of injury in there, uh, but they're pretty talented. I mean, yeah. Alex Kirilov is ready for a breakout as well, um, going into his third season, roughly. You know, I'm excited to see him. He's only 26 years old. Carlos Santana at 38 years old. Um, he was still over a two-war win player last year, underrated. They got him for $5 million. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I think they can still add. Um, if we go over to their payroll right here, it's fairly low. Yeah. 124. And they have guys locked up. They have Paulo Lopez on a four year deal here. Byron Buxton on that team friendly 15 million if he could stay healthy. Yep. Um and then yeah, I mean you're you're not paying Julian yet, who broke out last year. So I would like to see if we're going back to that lineup, if Cody Bellinger becomes a guy that's going to take a short-term deal because the market's just not there, I would want to see them jump in on that. I think that it's a perfect fit. You could play some first. You could play some outfield, you know? Well, we'll that, gives you, that gives you insurance if, heaven forbid, Buxton can't stay healthy, right? I mean, that's been the thing. Mm -hmm. He DH'd most of last year, and, and he says he's he's ready to play a full year at center field. So that, that's something to keep an eye on that. That, that does make sense. Um you mentioned in that previous video, like a JD Martinez type fit, kind of like a Nelson Cruz 2.0. That that I I do like that too. Um, yeah. Royce Lewis is so exciting. You saw him in the playoffs against the Blue Jays, three home runs and and those pair of games. And I mean, the guy's just been limited. He had 52 last year. He had 19 the year before that. It's just he's just been injured. So um, and he's he's still he's still so young, right? He's only like 25. So um first overall pick um you also yeah. mentioned in your intro too they lost Sonny gray yeah they need I, to add some i mean loss. they got di yeah so you talked about hori planco getting traded yeah dad di scofani is their five but Ober and paddock as your three four yeah i'm not too sold on that joe ryan's oh. gonna be great i mean that that guy he's he's got stuff and yeah it's He's going into his 28, well, he's 27, so maybe he's going to turn 28 this year. This is but his third year coming up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited to see him take that next step. He he could be a two on a real playoff team. You know, do we see Pablo Lopez as a top 
you know, pitcher in the game. Last year he was. Yeah. It says power rank right here is number five. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, you know, there's some names above him that I probably would rather have, but you well, know, he's getting the respect he deserves. But yeah, they they got a good bullpen too. Like they got yeah, a fireballer at the back, um, Brock Stewart, upper nineties. Uh, they bring in a sinker ball pitcher and, and uh, Justin Topa in the Jorge Polanco deal. They're bringing a guy like Jay Jackson who kind of just came out of nowhere for the Jays last year. He signs a, a cheap deal with them. So, um, yeah, there, there's a lot of power in that uh, bullpen for sure. What about Jordan Montgomery in this rotation right here? Yeah, I mean, 18 to 21 mil, we said, for Montgomery. Um only yeah, at 124, I, they have the money. It's yeah, just, no, they, they have, want to that, spend it. The money is definitely not an issue for sure. Like the even like if you go back to last year, I think they are up to 159 last year, and this year they're up that 120, 124. So, um, it, it'll be interesting to see. I don't think they're done. I do think that they are going to make a couple moves, but like it's just crazy how many free agents are available, and we're already pitchers and catchers are reporting. So, I mean, you you would think that you would think that uh, it would get ramped up here pretty quickly. Yeah, I can also see a Michael Lorenzen on this team. Yeah. Uh, it's just a name that comes to mind. I know he's not the the guy that's going to jump off the page or be that one-two, but you kind of already have that in Lopez and Ryan. You just need right. an innings eater, and I think that's what you'd get out of that guy. So right. Do you... um, I don't see Chris or Chris Sale, <laughs> Blake <laughs> Snell. I don't yeah. see Blake Snell going there, but, you know, you never know. Yeah, I mean, Minnesota's like not the – it's not the warmest of places to go. It's pretty cold mm-hmm. there. First couple months of the season, there's often a lot of it snows during games. First couple months, so yeah, it's definitely uh it's definitely a culture shock when you go to a place like Minnesota. But there's a lot of guys they could get. Um, it'd be interesting to see how it folds out. Yeah, let's check out the standings for or yep. projected standings. I should say they have them winning the division. Oh, they have them winning the division. No surprise there. Yeah, I mean. They all central. I don't know what's worse. They all central or the NL central. I it's, would have to say that probably they all coin, central. Flip still. a coin. That's that's what you do on that one. Yeah, but at least you get the Reds and the Pirates. They're going to be exciting. I mean, the Tigers. When are they going to take that next step? Yeah. Um. It it feels like the Tigers are a team that always have like this really good stretch of baseball for the past like two, three, uh, two or three seasons. And then the rest of the season is just like they're a losing record team. So they have a losing record at the end of the year. Um, and then oh, the Guardians... Wait, so the far right, they're, they're only projected to win by four games, eh? What do you mean by that? 24, 2024 projected full season? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean... I was, looking at the, I was looking at the far left. That's last year's stats. Mm-hmm. So... I mean, I, I guess it's a. I guess they're predicting the Tigers and the Guardians to kind of hang around, which is, if the if the Tigers win eighty games, I think that's a you'll, you'll take that as a jet step for sure. Yeah, and then the Guardians. I mean, they they didn't trade Bieber at least yet, as yeah. this video is coming out, <laughs> and spring training already started. I don't think it's gonna happen, but you never know. Yeah. Um, eighty wins for the guards. I don't know about that. But look at the run differential, what they're projecting. Only the Twins yeah. to have a positive one. So, yeah. um, obviously, offense is not uh, very good in this division. No. Um, I actually want to see the Royals kind of make – they've added a lot. We'll get into them on another video. But yeah, I, I'm kind of curious to see what steps the Royals take. Um, they have a lot of young players. Um, but, yeah, that this is the Twins division to lose for sure. Probably yeah. will be for the next two to three seasons, if I had to guess. Yep. <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, like I think that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, comment down uh what moves you think the, the twins should make. And uh yeah, see you guys on the next outlook. All right, later guys.